I S U P K. You can pull the um, table, pull the table, pull the table, yeah. You can pull it out, you can pull it out and sit back there. Unless you want the short table. It, it doesn't matter. It don't matter which one? It doesn't matter which one. Okay, walk your face and sit back there. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'm ready, I'm ready the short table. Hey, I, don't, I don't want it's fine with me. Just leave a space for people to walk around. Right? Come, come. Yeah, you want to come forward, forward and pull okay. the pillar? Come, come forward and pull out a little bit. Yeah, that's too hard, right? You sure that table would be enough for you? No, no, this is what I need last time. Okay, no sweat. You have a pen and everything? No, no, Okay, no sweat. All right. Anybody else question? No, sir. No sweat. I'm testing. One, two. I can get a little bit more on this side. Coffee going on. Please. Is that 12, sir? One? Yeah. That's a, that's a lot better. All right. All right. A few seconds, all right? Come on, come on, sir. All right, so this week you had, you had a Facebook outage. Right, Facebook outage. Everybody lose their best friend, which is that demon that's that lives on social media, on your Instagram and your not Twitter. I think Twitter is separate. It's Facebook, Instagram, your WhatsApp. WhatsApp is not really a social media, but it's more so a um, a communication device. Just like um, it's like losing text messages. But your Facebook and your Instagram and your Snapchat. Right, Zuckerberg has done bought them up, and for whatever reason, you know, he down there crippled everybody on um, what day was Monday, Monday afternoon, right? And and so we see how much dependency people have on self validation and really just you know time wasting and utter nonsense. When you look at the amount of time you spend daily, anybody ever get a chance, just look at your phone and um, look at the usage. Look at look at your screen usage, right? Not even your data and stuff like that. Look at what's, what's running your battery down <laughs> and you'll see how much time you spend on Facebook and you'll realize you, the amount of shit you could achieve if you stop. Yes, um, but that that um that's definitely a demon that plagues all people socially. You get me? It plagues our people horribly socially. All right. Um, let me know if you're getting questions still. All right, go ahead. Right, so we, we got a question from Young Man Casio. This was a question um from uh from Monday. But the question is, Slaki, if I may, are the thousands and tens of thousands spoken about Saul and David literal people of, of a rep representative? of how much how so-called great uh, a person was like when they were singing about Saul and David so killed thousands David killed tens of thousands come on, come on. okay it's it's not literal but it's it's like saying Saul killed a lot but David killed a whole lot it's like it's just how Israel talks is you know let me see some something that's modern today that you could get an idea of um, it's like somebody saying he snapped on the track. It doesn't mean he broke. Concert. And then somebody said, nah, man, he went beast. It doesn't mean he transformed into a beast. It's just showing you the, you know, it's, it's a comparison. So he snapped, but yeah, he went, he went beast. He went crazy on that track. It's a comparison. It, it was meant to exalt David. 
in comparison to Saul. Right, that's what it was. It was it was meant to exalt David in comparison to Saul. Meaning, before okay, even with the story with David and Saul, Saul did a lot of killing for Israel. Saul went to war. Saul brought, brought a lot of glory to Israel, but he fell out of favor with the Lord, and the Lord wanted to make clear who was going to be the next king. So David, in rising through the ranks. Gained a lot of power through battling, through being skilled in war. And David killed a lot as well, more than Saul. You get me? And they're saying now Saul killed thousands, which is a lot of people. To kill thousands of people is a lot. But David killed tens of thousands. You get the point? So who would be the greater warrior? Who would be the greater man of war? Which is something Israel always respects. That would be David. David would be the greater man of war, or you know, the one who was who was more so, you know, given more props or more honor or more you know value. It's is lift is uplifting David over Saul through his achievements, and that's what you know Israel measures anything with through achievements, right? That's how Israel is. is we we are we, we as a people we are a very carnal people. We're not at all spiritual. We're absolutely carnal in nature. You just think we, we came out of um, Egypt, walked through the Red Sea with a wall of water on one side and on the other side, and then got hungry and asked to go back to Egypt. Like that's the type of people, uh, as a people, we are. We are a very carnal people. So, of course, in that scenario, that's how the Lord had to show who he was with. You get it, boy? He had to show who he was with. Even um, when Samuel went to anoint David, what did David's father say? Anybody knows? Go ahead. When, when um, what, what, are you talking about when 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 Samuel was like, "Is this all? Is this it?" Mm -hmm. And uh, he was like, "Yeah, this is it." But um, I have, I have another son, you know, but he's just a he's just a shepherd boy. You know? All right, and, and pull, pull what's what what David's father said. First Samuel sixteen. You can start over one. Count on, count on verse. This is uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from, from reigning over Israel? Mm -hmm. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided a king among, among his sons. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, and, and Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take an heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And, Je and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will shew thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. All right. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town of the and the elders of the town trembled at his coming, and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, peaceably. Right, because why? Samuel was the Lord's prophet. So like, if he shows up, you can lose your head. You understand? Come so on. the people got worried when he show up. Get when he, there's, there ain't no high holy day coming up. When Samuel come riding into your town is, is to put judgment on somebody. Usually, that's why they was fearful. All right? So they said, listen, you come for peace or, or what? And he's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here on the other business. Go ahead. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. 
sanctify yourselves and come with me to this to the sacrifice mm -hmm. and he sanctified jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice right and it came to pass when they were come that he that he looked on Eliab and said surely the lord's anointed is before him but the lord said unto samuel say that read that part again select it come on come and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab mm -hmm. and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on, on his countenance mm -hmm. or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Right. So now who, who said, Surely the Lord's anointed is here? So like, is that is that Samuel saying that? That's Samuel saying that, right? So why why is Samuel saying that about who he talk about Eliab? It's like because he because he looks the he looks the part of he him. looked the part. You understand? That's that's how all people are. All people look at the outward thing. You get the point? Which is what gets us into trouble. You get the point? That's oh, what get, absolutely gets us into problems, right? Being making decisions carnally, weighing a matter carnally. Well, sometimes you have to wait calmly because of you know whatever you're dealing with but always everything should be done through counsel and with the what the lord wants is which is the spirit of the lord all right even though samuel was sent to anoint him he told samuel go tell jesse we coming to make a sacrifice and when jesse's sons come you'll see i'll show you who it is so samuel thinking well this is the lord showing me who it is and the lord is saying don't look at a man's height or his stature or countenance because the outward appearance is not what counts. Right? Read this again. Come, on, come. But the verse seven. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance mm -hmm. or on the height of his stature, mm -hmm. because I have refused him. Go ahead. For the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. Mm -hmm. For a man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. You understand? And also too, just um for more context. So anybody know what kind of um physically what kind of man Saul was? So, so was 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 something similar to that. He was very tall. So he was very big. A, he was a big dude. Come you on, get the point? So of course, you know, the next day he gotta be this guy. And the Lord is saying, nah. Uh-uh. That's not the one. Go ahead. Come on, come on. Verse 8. Then Jesse called Abinadad and made him pass before Saul, before Samuel. Mm -hmm. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse said, Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. Mm -hmm. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. <laughs> Again. He said chosen this, not, not him. Enough. <laughs> this, like, this thing you bring in here, it's very easy. Mm -hmm. come on, come on. Verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord had not chosen these. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he cometh hither, till he come hither. Verse 12, And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ready, and mm -hmm. withal of a, of a beautiful countenance, mm -hmm. and goodly to look to. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him. For this is he. You understand? And now both Sam Samuel didn't know about um, David. Jesse knew about David, but Jesse only called the other sons. You get the point? Oh, okay. He did not call David. Samuel had to say, well, this, this got to be a mistake because the Lord said, come here. One of your sons is the king, but none of these who you call as the king is, they got to be one more. But Jesse, is he's not even thinking about David or else David would have already been there. Then he said he had to go send and call David. And he tell you David was young, ruddy. What does he ruddy mean? Come on. Uh, like, like beautiful to, or nice to look at? Mm, not totally. Not totally. Not just beautiful to look at. It's diff a little bit, it's a little bit more specific. It's a specific type of beauty. Like he was, he He, he was he was uh he was young he was young 
There's a beauty that comes with youth, where it's, it, the beauty of it is life. You understand? Like that. you look different when you're 18, when you're 20, 21. Even a young brother who's 18, by the time he's 27, he fills out more. His face is wider, his neck is bigger. There's a there's a certain look you have when you're young that's just so fresh. That's why even um today in the, the music industry, youth runs our music. You get the point? No. I don't care how good Method Man could rap. He can't go and stand up on a stage with any one of these young boys now. You get the point? No. That's just how it is. This this is a, our culture is based on that. Young and fresh and full of what? Life. That's who we are. Full of life. We're not a dead people. We're not like the Asians or the Africans or the East Indians. We are people full of life. You get the point? And that youth, youth has the monopoly on life. That's just it. Youth just it that's just the natural progression of things. Youth has that monopoly on life. And David was ruddy, meaning he had that young, healthy, glowing, fresh look. You get the point? That's what ruddy really means. In the Bible dictionary, you would see red. Um, but that's that's in talking about. Your, your, the skin tone of being not red like light skin, not light skin or white. That's what the fake Israelites would like to say. Because it says red and Esau is red, they try to say David was a white man when he's not. One of the definitions of ruddy means young and youthful, full of life. You get the point? And David was ruddy. He had good countenance. He was good to look at. Meaning this is a young man who ain't been to war. Right? This is a young man um, now, this paraphrase for now, when he went to fight Goliath, what did Goliath say? Who is this stripling? You know what stripling is? Like, like a like a well, like a, a, a young. Well, that's what it's in reference to, but a stripling is like imagine you have um plywood mm -hmm. and you know it peels and you get a little strip. See how skinny that is? Oh, that's how that's what David remind um reminded Goliath of. The lad was nine feet tall and been to battles or scarred up, hardened by battle. And this is who you said it offended him because it's like, if you think he could beat me, you all lost your mind. You get the point? Oh, it's because he was so young. He hadn't he hadn't been to war or nothing. He was at war in, in the um, wilderness protecting the sheep. You might later on tell you what stories how he killed the bear and the lion for the sheep. But he hadn't he wasn't hardened by war like his other brothers or grown as that. Get the point, but that was the one. We are a carnal people, we would have never chose him. Get the point? We would have never chose him. So the Lord now had to exalt David up for us to choose him. You get the point for us to now be like Saul killed thousands, yeah, but David killed tens of thousands. To understand it, really, you had to go back and read about Saul about how much then he beat them Hamites ass and brought a ton of gold back. So it wasn't like he was just a sloppy ass king. He disobeyed the Lord one too many times and fell out of favor. That was it. He disobeyed the Lord over and over and over. It wasn't just that one time with the sheep. He did it before, a couple times before. And that was just the last stroke. You get the point? So to, to understand that you had to understand what Saul did and now what David did. And it's a comparison because the Lord is now exalting David. He's raising David up. Because why? Israel is carnal. They need to see that. They're not going to just follow him because I say so. How you know that? The Lord said, this is my son here, ye him, talking about Christ. Did we follow Christ? Last no. Because Christ was more powerful with a thousand chariots, you know, coming down steps of gold. You know, he wasn't that. He didn't command a legion or army. You get the point? And we didn't. John the Baptist prophesied about Christ. And still didn't follow him because why? They say, are you the one we're supposed to follow or should we look for someone else? That's what John's men literally said. Are you who we should follow or should we look for someone else? The prophecy said he's the one. But what you see in, you, you know, you want something else. You get the point? That's how our people are. That's that's just it. Our people are like that and that's that. You know what I mean? So, what you think, what you bring it out? It, it, it's really heavy because I some some something something was going on with 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 me, mm -hmm. and I just couldn't understand why things were happening. And just how the way you just broke this down just made perfect sense. 
Most high in Christ, right? So that makes perfect sense. Most high in Christ. All right. So that's it. So it's not a literal tens of thousands, but it was it's a lot. He did a lot of killing. He did a lot of killing in this present time. You get the point is it's just his turn. That's really what it is. Now is his time. You get the point? Now is his time. He get a ring. Just think the rap will. It's to understand it. I'm not saying it's literally that. But to understand it, these young rappers don't have a catalog like the old school rappers. But shit, they're selling off shows that making millions are millions of dollars. You know, Wu Tang sold, you know, hundreds of thousands. The baby selling millions. What? He's the one. He's the, that's they, this is their time now to rule. And that's just how it is. That's just that's the life. That's the progression of life. The Lord chose David and he had to show this is who he's with. That's just it. You get it? And it could have gone totally different. It could have gone so different, but Saul disobeyed the Lord and he, he had to be removed. And that was it. It could have gone a whole different way. Who the hell knows? But Saul, because of how Saul dealt with what he was given to do, the Lord had to remove him and had to put somebody in there who it's obvious the Lord is with him. Why? Because he don't look like the Lord is with him. But when he start killing, now you're going to know, well, surely the Lord is with this dude here. Right. Because look at what he's doing. How could he do it unless the Lord is with him? You understand? He, no. If Saul stepped out there to fight Goliath, you know, Saul's a big dude. He fully, you know, he full of war experience. Goliath big too. But this boy step out? Shit. And then cut off Goliath head and was talking shit before? Come on, come on. Oh, the Lord is with this fellow here. The Lord with him. That, it, it, that's... We are a carnal people. You get the point? Like the Lord can just take him out from you know tending sheep and say, This is your king. Israel has been like, <laughs> Yeah, all right. Hashtag okay. Slide it. Go ahead. Hashtag not my king. Not my king. <laughs> <laughs> not my Jesus. <laughs> you get the point? Like the Lord now he's gonna start to do things to make it evident. This is who. And it's the same thing he did with Christ. He had to start to do things to make it evident who Christ was. You get it, boy? It's just that's just how our people is like that. Moses, when Moses came back to Egypt, Moses had to go and contend with Pharaoh's scientists, magicians. He had to do miracles. And you know, Pharaoh still didn't even want to believe, much less our people. Yes, I remember Moses went down. Who are you that who, who made you king over us? When he first went down, our people are, we're, we're a hard-headed type of people. Are. That's just who we are. We're not, we're not the heathens, and that's what makes us special. You get the point? We're not, the, we're not that easy thing. We're something that you're going to, you know, you have to conquer. But if you can get us, uh, we're, the, we're the best thing in the world. But we're just a hard-headed, as a people can't. And that's just that's just how it is. So David, David had to kill tens of thousands. The woman had to sing it. They had to exalt him up, to raise him up. You get the point? This is you know, it's, it's the Lord's politics if you want to describe it like that in the spiritual realm. That's how he's doing. He's raising up. He's raising him up. So now, you, what's he gonna say about this guy here? Not say nothing. You get the point? So that's it. <clears throat> All right. Any more? A uh, lot, sir. All right. Anybody have any questions? Just type them in or raise your hand. So now, everybody freaking out over this guy getting Squid Games, right? <laughs> Squid I, For the first time I heard it, I was like, what the hell? What kind of nonsense is this? So I started looking at it, reading up, reading up about it. The Squid Games is just a glorified Hunger Games. It's really black and Hispanic life in America. Just another nation of people going through it. Right, they can describe it how they want, use all kind of little, you know, then chicks and then halfway retarded anyway. So they had to use the triangle and the square and the, you know the circle to describe every goddamn thing. But the, the, the essence of it is these people is in debt, you know, going to jail for being in debt. They you know getting kicked out of the house, doing fraud on the stock market, and this company is offering them 
a chance to make 400 and something billion Korean money, which is like about 38, 14 million US dollars, right? You play a series of kids' games. When you look, if you lose, you get killed, and they didn't know that. But if you pay attention to the rules, you would win, you would advance to the next stage, right? Also, if they, they um, they got about 400 and something people to join the so-called Squid Game, to sign over their life and rights and body and shit. Um, also, while they're waiting on the games, if other, if you die while playing the game, your share of the money goes into this big pot and it, it, it's divided up by whoever finishes the series of games. So, of course, if you in there and you a strong man, you start killing everybody else so you could get the money at the end, which is what started happening. The first two games was fine. By the third game, they, they, brought, they brought in food the morning for them and deliberately gave them less food to make them fight each other. That's what they told them. They said, we deliberately gave you this food to see if you all would fight each other and you all did. And they fought each other. And because somebody didn't get food, that night when the lights went out, they started stabbing each other. So they have them in this big warehouse like barracks or prison. And they started stabbing each other and beating each other, cracking each other's heads. And then the guards came in with guns and stopped the massacre. And half of the people was dead. So as they wheeling out the half and the ones who survived, some of them laughing because they wanted to kill. The, some of them scared because they just survived the night. The big pot with the money come down and you see more money coming into it because those dead people that's their portion that goes to whoever is alive and that's really the essence of the goddamn squid games it's la it's only koreans they have one east indian in there because he went to korea to make money but it's only koreans in there um which is what's one telltale this is not you know the worldwide a worldwide effect. It's telling you this is affecting a certain type of people. You started watching these movies and these stories. The best stories for Hollywood are our stories. That's just it. From Star Wars with these Star Wars is the one with the Jedi? Star right, Star Wars is the one with the Jedi. The Jedi, um, Yoda, Judah, um, the Jedi mind, the, the, the um, Jedi I think is, is Judah too. Somehow in the language it translates to that. The um, the whole makeup of the whole Star, Star Wars thing is supposed to be the 12 tribes, it's supposed to be the House of Judah. Um, give me something else. Lord of the Rings. Um, what else we have? Any, mo any movie, Matrix. All those are our stories that they take and they twist into something to fit their narrative. But it's really our story that they, they retell it. Ma Matrix is Yahusha from beginning to the end. It's him from the he was dead in the world, then somebody gave him life. That's Adam. And then all the way in the end, he fully become one with the Matrix and have all the power in the world. It's the same. It's the, say, it's the exact, what was the um, name of the ship in Matrix? Nebuchadnezzar, that was in slavery. He was the king of the slaves. You, you, you get the point, king of the king that was in slavery. It's, uh, it's always our story that they, you know, turn and they retell and they, you know, twist it somehow and they put it into a movie and it sells, it, you know, it makes millions of dollars, billions of dollars because our story is the best story. Give me that in sounds, all right? Let's start there. Um, give me, hold on. Uh, our days pass, our days pass like it as a tale. Psalms 90 and 9. All right, give me Psalms 90 and 9. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, ev everything in Hollywood that was a major success. You could look at it and you see Israel. Um, Superman. The whole mantle and the boots, even though they have him looking halfway gay in the spandex. The whole mantle and the boots thing comes from the Bible. 
On his planet, he didn't have no mantle. On Earth, he has a mantle. To everybody else, he has superior powers. But with his people, he is normal, right? When the when um Jackie Robinson went in the major leagues, he was the man. The shit. He doing what every nigga does. Every movie you have, you could see this is, is really our story over Planet of the Apes. Oh, okay. I mean, some of them escaping me now, because I watch movies just for the entertainment and then forget about it the next day. But it's it's our story over and over. Hunger Games is us. Living in different districts. You know, one representative had to go and, you know, compete for the rich, for the elite. It's, it's been our story. You get the point? And so, like, Hollywood is no is no stranger to going into the Bible to find something to sell. Right? There's no stranger to going in the Bible and finding something that's just worthy enough to put some millions behind and then decide, okay, we're going to make a movie on this, but it's really the story of the slaves being told one more time. You know, re resold, re uphold, and redriven. That's what Jay Z said, right? It's just it's just resold, it's redone, and put right back out again, where they're going to make some money for it. But watch, I need you here. The brother can handle everything else, all right? Yeah, you have some chapter. You get the point. So give me Psalms ninety and nine. Come on, this Psalms chapter ninety and verse nine. Mm -hmm. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Say it again. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. What does that mean? All our days are passed away in thy wrath. I want to say um, that, that we... It, what is all our days? Our, our time, all of our time. What is all, all of our time? Talk, speaking of Israel. Hey, well, what is what is all of our time mean? The time that, we, that we're here on earth. So what is that also called? Our life. Our life. All our life, all our days are passed away in thy wrath. If, if, he, if, he's, if the Most High is angry with us, he'll kill us. Our life is full of the wrath of the Lord because we disobey him so much. Isn't that our life? Isn't that our life been goddamn horrible from day one? It ain't horrible to us because it's... What do you have to say? Level four, because of the cartel, you have to say, well, listen, it's blacks and Hispanics life. This ain't nothing new to us. We don't be talking about level four. I grew up in level four. I went to school in level five. I got married in level six, goddamn it. What are you talking about? Well, that's our life, though. And to the to the nations, it's an amazement. That's what the scriptures say. Uh, we will be an astonishment mm -hmm. to the heathen. A, a proverb and a Bible because it's like, nigga, that's how you living? Yeah, what's your problem? This is our life. Read it again from the top. Kind of kind. Psalms chapter 90 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. All our days are passed away in thy wrath. Go ahead. We spend our years as a tale that is told. I'm told. I'm told. Appreciate that. We spend our days as what? We spend our years as a tale that is told. We spend our years as a tale that is told. What does that mean? That, Come on. That means uh, they, they, they entertain themselves with, with, the, with the stories from our lives. You say that? Twist it up. You're right in what you're thinking. You're saying it twisted up. Read it one more time. Come on, come. We spend our years as a tale that is told. We spend our years as a tale that is told. What are we talking about? What is it? Um, is it that we we try to we try to like the movies that we see? We try to perpetrate to. Mm -mm. Down near the opposite. It's down near the opposite of what you say. We spend our years as a tale that is told. All right, let's take it. Go ahead. So like, is, it, is it saying the, the stories that are told is, is, is about our lives? Yeah. Or you still see the twisted. 
We spend our years as a tail that is told. Give me a tail that is told. Any tail that is told. Any, any tale. What is a tale? T-A-L-E. A story. A story. Give me any story that is told. Anyone. No matter. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, right? It's about different families. One have is the, the, the symbol of a wolf. The other one is the symbol of a lion. They have other ones from different parts. You have the ones who um, live in tents and ride horses with long hair. And they have different rules when you come into their land. And they're fighting amongst each other. And then there's another thing that coming for them with dragons that breathe fire down from the sky. Right? Like Revelation, the dragon breathe. And they all have to come together to fight this damn bastard. Right? We spend our lives as a tale that is told. Our life. When the heathens look at it, it looks like a movie. That's what it is. It's hard for you to understand because you live in life. Everybody see the movie Baby Boy, right? Oh, God. What do you think about the movie Baby Boy? <laughs> just, a, just a story. I know people like that. You know people like that, right? Oh, right? I saw Baby Boy when I was in Trinidad, and for the life of me, I was like, who the hell would make a movie so goddamn ridiculous? I'm serious. Outside of America... The life that, that black Americans live, brother, you have to be here to understand it. Boys in the hood, be, I'm talking about when it came out. Unless you lived in America and seen certain things for this time, this is a, as far as you know, this is a story. Menace to society. It's a story. This is not reality. You get the point? Come on. It's like if I could. Um, I, I I know some some people that was that's the, that was from South Central LA, and, and mm -hmm. this one one person told me that that was a true story. It was small details because they're from South Central LA. Come on, come on. But if you in Jamaica somewhere or Brazil, mm -hmm. that does not it looks different to you. Come on. You get the point? That's not life to somebody else. I'm gonna give you a more current example. You probably have to. Remember what you what it looked like back then when it first came out. Black Panther. Black Panther to black Americans represented what? Pride. Pride and hope. Mm -hmm. Black Panther to Americans represented what? Up for niggas. All right, I'll take that. To the outside world, mm -hmm. they hated Killmonger. Absolutely, you could pull up. You see if you can find. I don't know if we have the speed to play it right now, but pull up. Um, I want to believe it's Asians. Put, let me see if I find it. Pull up Asians. Asians' reaction to Black Panther movie to Marvel and Black Panther, and they all hated Killmonger. And why was he so aggressive? And he didn't have to be like that. He was so extra. They all tell you that they all hated him. They all despised him. But that Black Panther movie was a character assassination of the tribe of Judah by Hollywood. Because our life was Killmonger's life. You get the point? Growing up, playing basketball. Somebody go up and kill your father. You don't know what the hell is going on. Nobody accepts you. In the hood where you are, nobody can accept you. The place where you come from don't accept you. You get the point? You went to the Esau's military and killed everything moving. To what? To try to appease the pain of everything. Now you're trying to come back and get what's yours and everybody hates you. People outside don't understand it because it's like a tale. It like, it's like Hansel and Greta. It's like Cinderella. It's like Snow White. But guess what, Negro? That's our life. Literally. It's our life. You get the point? It's it's a it's a huge disconnect. It's propaganda with Hollywood when you actually look at the outside opinion of black movies, of black Hollywood. When you look at the outside opinion of it, you would not be so quick to um embrace these movies that so-called 
you know, are good for black people, then they're absolutely not. They're absolute. Notice it from Menace to Society to Black Panther. Nobody hated them, the, the white people who was in there. Nobody, you know, was like, damn. Even our um, boys in the hood, the, the, they, they got pulled over, right? Look, I'm, I'm going to need you to read for a second, all right? Bro, you might grab them that one. They got pulled over, right? Which cop was the asshole? Black cop. There's a white cop there. Concert. You get it, boy? Um, it, Black Panther. Who everybody hated? They didn't hate the one armed white man who was stealing all the power and killing everybody. They didn't hate him, though. And he was an oppressor. They called him colonizer. But they didn't hate him. They hated Killmonger. The everything out of Hollywood is written to make the world hate us. You understand? I will, and I'm saying us. Let me just clear it up for any fool on the internet saying, well, nigga, you're not from America. I, shit, I, yes, I am. Yes, the, yes, the F I am. I'm going to tell you why. Because Judah is the head tribe. And if you ignore what happens to Judah, you just like being under the white man's appeal. Right. You understand? There's a huge push to make sure Negro heads stay down and spirit broken. There's a huge push. Because the minute Judah stands up, the rest of the 12 tribes will stand up. That's biblical proof. Precept. Go ahead. Is it is it like mm -hmm. is it um Genesis forty nine when they're describing um is Genesis forty nine and what the actual precept though? When, when they're describing Judah, when, when, uh, uh, well, pull it in Genesis 49, I want the actual answer. Yeah, I'm just like, what's going on? So, uh, come, 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 come. Forty nine and ten, forty nine eleven. Come on, come. Go ahead. Genesis chapter forty nine and verse ten. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. That's correct. That's gonna be one on one. Try nine. Come on, come. Verse nine. Judah is a lion's wealth. Mm, that's gonna be one on one. All right, go ahead. Keep, sorry, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. Judah is a lion's wealth. Mm -hmm. From Give the front. Give me a verse eight. Come on, come. Verse eight. Judah, thou art thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Say it one more time. Thou Judah, thou art he whom thy whom thy brethren shall praise. Say it one more time. Kind of kind. Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. You understand? That's Jacob's prophecy for Judah. Guess who has these records? Um, what's the nigga who creates Star Wars? What's his name? George uh, Lucas. George Lucas. Mm -hmm. What nationality is he? Yeah. Okay, we, we know he's a devil, but it's oh. different. It's Polish. It's German. Believe me, Alexa. He's what? I'm Alexa. Oh, the, the um, the ones who make movies, right? Oh, God. Yeah, he also read this too. And and he's married to a uh, to a to a sister. So. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. They know Judah is who his brethren shall praise. Right. We can't have his brethren praising him. It's going to be a problem. Right. Boys in the hood. Right. Minister Society. Coming to effing America. Oh, sir. You don't You don't see the damage it does to the image of black men. You don't see it because we finally made it. Eddie Murphy on the big screen. It's good to see black people on the screen. Right. You don't know the damage it, it's doing to you worldwide. You, you don't understand it. Right. However, Judah turned his hand backwards. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. You listen to Dan Soul and Reggae and Reggae Tone now, it sounds more like rap and hip hop than anything else. You get the point? Uh -huh. The 12 tribes is going to follow Judah anywhere, doing anything forever. Hollywood's push is always going to be to discredit 
the black man especially. But the house of Judah. Go ahead. It's like it's so a question. Um, it w- it wouldn't matter where Judah was. It it would still be like like let's just say if Judah was in uh, what was in another country, mm-hmm. would it still be like um everybody looking to to Judah, or just because this is the uh the, the beast that sits on many borders? Okay, what do you mean? Like, like I, I once upon a time I thought that you know. Black men in America, black people in America, mm-hmm. was looking at us because of the 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 ability of America to to, to show whatever they want. Black people in America would look at us, or not, the world would look at black people black in America, America because of uh, Hollywood and what what Hollywood can push out. Well, that's the only image of black people in America. If you've lived outside of America, there's there's really only one image of black men. Angry, violent, drug dealer. That's it. That's why certain movies, there's always movies that go against the current strategically that are successful. Where they they take the average black man and put him in a suit and give him a whole other thing to play. Remember Boomerang with Eddie Murphy? That was successful because he was a successful gentleman. And he wasn't, you know, Halle Berry was this, you know, well-to-do woman who Every now and then they do that, but the consistent image they push is that. And that's why Black Panther was so successful because we're tired of, what do people say? We're tired of seeing the stereotypical image of black men and black people. Right. We need to see black people in a superior light. And if it wasn't for Killmonger, the movie would have been perfect. If it wasn't for that little dread-headed, right. hip-hop listening mother effer, right. that movie would have been perfect. You get the point? Ain't nobody did this and took pictures when Killmonger died. Right. But when, you know, whatever his name, I forget his name. Chadwick Boseman, Chadwick Boseman died. It was like Christ died. Yeah. It was a huge thing because that's how much weight Hollywood carries for us as a people. Once again, remember what we just talked about in the beginning. As a people, we are carnal. What we see, what, you know, the things we're responsive, we're very receptive to physical stimulation. Whether what we see, smell, touch, what that is how we largely make our decisions. You get the point? We don't look at the damage it does outside. It does a lot of damage outside. It does a whole ton of damage outside that is absolutely just it's not it's not by mistake, it's by design. You understand? Our life is as a tale that is told. Our days, our years is as a tale that is told. And it's been told over and over. So now you have this Korean. He said he wrote the damn script in 2009, but nobody would pick it up. Okay. Of course, because Koreans not oppressed. Don't nobody want to see no Korean oppressed? <laughs> but all of a sudden, Netflix picks it up. And it's on it's on record to set what? The re- it's, it's on route to set the record for the most watched um, series on Netflix. Right, right after some Asian hate, right? It's right. about... Three billion of them. Of course, you know, they just had a streaming movie one time and it's a success. <laughs> but that's not Korean life. Squid Games is not Korean life, Negro. Squid Games is niggas' life. Living in debt. Right. Trying to make moves. Robbing and hustling. Brother, there's pickpockets and thieves and thugs and dumb shit out. That's, that, that's who the movie show is based on. And they pull all of them in something that they just have to play these games of athletic ability and some some intellect and of course you know they, they stack them in a, a certain um room like a prison right and they feed them rations and they deliberately feed them less or fight it break out mm-hmm. and they all watch the fight on monitors and when enough of them die they send the guards in that's not korean life nope. i don't care what you say blacks and Hispanic. that's why it's so popular right now because it's nigger life it's it's blackface. Right. Squid Games is absolutely blackface. Go ahead. Come on, come on. What you, and what you're describing, I, I I just heard you know what was going on with Squid Games. I didn't know anything about it. But what you're describing is life in these homeless shelters, like in these big cities like New York, DC, Chicago. It's like everywhere. It's like what concert. Go ahead. It's like the, the homeless would rather stay out in Chicago in the middle of winter outside yeah, so than going to go shelter. Going, going to shelter. Listen, it's, it's, it's life in the right? shelter. It's life in the halfway homes. It's life in the foster homes. It's life in the prison, federal and, and city and state, whatever. 
It's, it's life everywhere for us as a people. It's life in the detention center. That's it. it the, brother, if you see, Adam, they don't want to play any clips from it because of the, the copyright shit. But the only reason, I, listen, I, I would never watch that dumb shit up. Triangles and squares and shit. People in red jumpsuits. I would never watch that dumb shit. But I see shit make news and it's trending and I figured, you know, there must be some teaching tool in it somewhere. So I binge watch this shit, seventy five percent. And brother, if that was, you know what Squid Games is? You seen Oz? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's Oz. Yeah, it's literally Oz. Well, okay. By the second night, they form in gangs. They call them teams <laughs> to play the games. But it's literally gangs, and they're walking around saying, "You with us? You strong? Yeah, you come with us." Because they're building a team under the premise that they're going to play the next game and win. But that night, they're going to kill other teams. But everybody love it. Right. Why? Because it's Koreans? No. Because it's that's niggas life they're talking about. That whole thing there is, is Negro life. Now, everybody, like I said, the whole thing is everybody who was in debt, who was ready to go to jail, robbing, doing all kind of gambling. You have some Korean there. He on child support. He's the main star. He on child support. He can't see his daughter. His mother giving him money. He, 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 his mother giving him money to go take his daughter out for her birthday. He went and gambled the money because he's in so much goddamn debt. When, on his way out, he meets some people who was who supposed to, um, who he owe money to. They try to whoop his ass. He run and say, bro, that, Korean bro who pick his pocket and take the money and run. I'm like, that is not, you know, that, that's not who was beating sisters in the damn nail shop. That's not them. That's nigga life. Huh? You on child support in Korea? <laughs> are you, are you, are you kidding me? Him and the new, him and the stepdad fighting. Yep. Fighting. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, hold up. Wait, no, you're wrong. Right. You're wrong for this one here. That Squid Game, listen now, with all this thing they're talking about in the news now with representation in Hollywood, they have the homosexuals saying you need a real transgender to play any transgender role. That um Jewish actress named something Silverman, Sil Silverman, I think is her name. She just went, she just went on TV and said, um, any Jewish role that's not played by an actual Jewish person is Jew face. She actually said it. Now she's a comedian, she could be trolling. But you best believe they're going to take that up in Hollywood. Sarah Silverman. Sarah Silverman. Yeah. She just went on TV and said, we need accurate representation. If it is you're going to be playing a Jew on TV or Jewish, you must actually be Jewish in real life. Right. As if Jonah Hill and, um, you know, give me some more than, you know, Jewish people. What's the other one? Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen yeah. As if them ain't Jewish. Right. You get the point? With all that representation... You now take black people's story and make it Chinese. Right. So stop Asian hate first. And now a Korean thing named Squid Games about people who suffer in oppression, in debt, child support, losing their house, lying to their parents about shit, you know, drug addicts, and they're going in this thing here to play some game where they're going to win money and it turn into a whole prison complex. And the exact prison complex that you see here is what's going on in the show. They done stole our life for profit. Huh? God, sir. They done absolutely stole our life for profit. Let's get, let's get some of the, um, the, uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the parts of our life. The two. Give me Isaiah 42 and 28. I believe that's what I want. Prison houses. Sir. Yeah, go ahead. I remember General Muhammad a while back. He said every black, Hispanic, and Native American can write a best-selling movie or a best-selling book about their lives. That's no bullshit. And if you look at most of the movies coming out now, that they lack so much creativity. Even the old movies, what they understand what sells is what we go through. It's, it's our life. It's our lives. If you can take our life and wrap it in anything, brother, they make car any cartoon is about our life. Art. Right. Any say any cartoon at all is 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 us. You get the point? Is is our life? A bug's life is is niggas. <laughs> yeah, God. 
is absolute niggas with the police and police brutality and all that shit. Right. It's this is this is just our life. You get the point? Right. Give me Isaiah 42 and 22. Right? Uh, because see if you can pull up a picture of that squid games, you know, anything in the prison. Just, just pull up squid games, you know, in 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 the, the I don't know what you call it, the detention center. And they're all the way off on some foul island. Oh, and this is the other thing. Okay, the, the losers of the games, right? <laughs> you know, they kill them. If you if you lose the game, if you you know you you're not playing by the rules, you don't just lose, you die. They put you to death. They got some doctor in there. Okay, the people in the red, they're supposed to be, I guess, the prison guards or the police or whatever. They got one of them, one of the people who play in the game, he's a doctor in real life and he in debt or some shit like that. He being sued for killing somebody. The prison guards get him to come down every night in the basement and cut open dead bodies to have his organs. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> So nobody ain't seeing that this is black people we're talking about? Right. Like, you, you, that, that's actually, you know, but now this would be a, they would they would interview this Korean and say how, um, you know, what inspired you to write this story? You know, it's so twisted. Everybody, and that's what most, most white people say. It's so twisted. It's, it's eerie. I don't like the fact they had to die. They died in some horrible ways too. They're just so, you know, it's a twisted show. I don't understand it. But then when we march and say Black Lives Matter, you know, you say All Lives Matter. Like, that's the hypocrisy in the shit. You love Squid Games, but you don't love black people. No. When it's black people's life you're watching in the damn Squid Game. It's black people's life in the Hunger Games. And you, you, you found the image of it? Come on, come on. Right. You see where they, they're living? In this, where they show them sleeping on the beds and shit? It's like seven and eight tears high. And brother, it's the, it's the prisoner. It's the prison. You're right, you could put a picture of, of it up, right? So they, they all sleep in there, they all have uniforms, right? They all wear and they and they don't have names in there. It's number one, number two, oh oh one, oh oh two, you know, one oh two, one oh five, just like prison. You get the point? Just like prison. Right? At night they all come in there, lights out, and they have a countdown to the lights out, and then the, the you know the lights come on in the morning. Right, give me the scripture I want, please. Come, we'll come. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared and holed, mm -hmm. and they are hid in prison, right? Like houses, right? These are the people robbed and spoiled, they are hidden in holes, right. They're hidden in prison houses. That's us. We are the people who robbed and spoiled. Right. By our leaders, by our religions. We are the people who robbed and spoiled. We are the people who are in snares and traps, drug dealing, you know, scams, religions. Life in America is a snare and a trap. Right. And we are hidden in the prison houses. Come, come. Now you look at this that goddamn squid game guy. It's the same thing. It's just as Korean people. Whoever selling drugs, whoever prostituting, whoever have whatever issues they have, gambling, debt, fraud, and now they have them, you know, in that, you know, complex or arena. And it's like, you know, they, they're being robbed. That's what they say. They're being robbed. This is unfair how you're treating us. But that's not Korean life. But there's a people who actually live in that life that they put in on TV and making money over. Nobody feeling sorry for them. Nobody, you know, even crying or, you know, put asking to put an end to it. They, they, they could say that, you know, the, the, the Squid Games, the whole movie is, or the whole series is so twisted and so savage. And some of them um, movie critics don't want to watch it. But nigga, that's our life. Come, come. You know what I mean? Like this, this show is heading to be number one on Netflix. Number one. And this is our story. Wholesale. Hands down, our story. You get the point? I will come. Um, give me some more. Give me... um. Hold on. One second. It 
Hey, somebody check and see if the, um, the, the headquarters channel is streaming. All right, read really the scripture one more time for me. Come on, come, sir. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. Mm -hmm. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Oh, Go ahead. They are all of them snarled in Snare. holes, snared Snare. in holes. And they are hid in prison houses. Mm -hmm. They are for prey. And none deliver it. Right? They are hidden for they are hidden in prison houses. They are for prey and none deliver it. We look at that damn series. I, I, I listen, I'm I'm absolutely not interested in that thing. I would never ever watch it right. if I didn't see it trending so goddamn much. Trending, trending so much everywhere, squid game, this squid game, that the damn kids talking about squid game. I couldn't understand how the hell they even know about it. And they went, guess what they're seeing it on YouTube, on YouTube kids. Mm -hmm. This is how this is. I'm trying to tell you. This is this is how they this is how they operate. It's on YouTube kids. Because of course the games they play in is kids' games, tug of war. But you die if you lose. Yes. You get the point? But this is once again, this is how they, they, they push a certain um agenda in Hollywood to destroy our image. You get the point? Uh -huh. Now everybody gets to feel sorry for the Koreans, but our people, you know, it's, it's a problem. You get the point? Okay. Give me um no regard for the old or the young. Let me do Jeremy 28 and 50. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Right. They have an old man in there, old Korean, he have a brain tumor, ready to die. He ain't getting no mercy in there. When they first start killing people, some broad get up and say, listen, I'm young. I have a baby. I just gave birth to the baby. Let me go, please. They say, nah, you ain't going nowhere. Like the whole thing is just like if you watch it on face value, it's just a some twisted, you know, Asian half anime type type flick that just don't make sense. But brother, as this thing starts to progress, this is black people's lives. This is nothing else but black people's lives. You get it, boy? That's what games is our life from beginning to end. Now, I ain't see the end of it yet. I don't care to see the end of it. I've seen enough. I, after I see the damn prison riots, brother, I was like, well, hold up. I'm talking about Shanta. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, these are supposed to be, you know, stockbrokers, some doctors, <laughs> some lawyers. They have some ratchet ass people in there too. There was some, you know, tattoo snake on the face and shit. But these niggas making shanks and shit at and breaking apart the bed. Right. And the bed is made out of some metal bars. I'm talking about straight up beating people head in, bro. Beating your head all the way in. That's some brought their smuggled cigarettes in, in her box. <laughs> I asked to go in the bathroom and, and she pull it out in the condom and pull it out like, yes. <laughs> I'm unpacking and start lighting up in the damn stall. I'm like, hold up. How in the hell is this number one? Right. Come on, It's like you said it already. I haven't seen it yet. I've been seeing the advertisements. I'm going to go watch it now, but it just sounds like Korean eyes. It's, I'm That's trying it. to tell you. I'm, listen, brother. You, listen, you had, to, you had to go check it out and just see just how how much your life matters. Right. That's just it. This is just showing me how much black people's life really does matter. Right. Whether we're oppressed or not, right. our life is really what runs this place. Right. No, Squid right. Games is a to is total blackface, brother. Is absolute blackface and nothing else. Right. Right? Read last scripture one more time. Come, come, sir. I'm trying to see what everybody ever seen. I wanted to talk about that. Go ahead. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance which shall show which which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Mm -hmm. Now that's that's who we deal with as our oppressor. Now there. They kind of blurring the lines with it because they're all Korean except one East Indian. He's the only one who's different in there. But everybody else, and listen, he's calling them sir. He's calling them sir, sir, like he's subservient. But everybody else is just all Korean is just supposed to be totally kind of homogeneous. Once again, our prison system is 
mainly us. You get the point? It's just full of us and nothing else. And, you know, it's just us in there and it's, you know, the strong survive. And that's what it turns into. It turned into if you're strong, you win. Right. And if you're weak, you die. And in the beginning, they didn't. They wanted to stop the game. They say, no, you can't kill innocent people. Then when he explained the rules and he, then he sent them back out into the world, he said, I'm giving you all two days back out there. If you want to continue playing, you'll come on back. Because all the money they could win, them niggas went back into the world and wanted to say that like, whoever died that it doesn't matter. Right. And came willingly came right back to the island to, to play the game and kill each other. And now they're at the point now where I've already reached any damn thing. I couldn't watch everything. Because it's 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 boring in between. But wherever it is, they reach to the point now, they figure out that whoever dies, they lose the money. So it makes sense to kill the next person right. to get paid. Korea on Korean crime? What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Like the whole thing, come on. So like you too, I was gonna say, um, in the beginning they had said um everybody that dies, like their family gets like a hundred million or something oh, like forget that. Forget that part. So and, so and, and, yeah. <laughs> so, and at the end, like a couple episodes towards the end, it's some some devils and some old devils and masks that's running the whole the thing. The whole thing. That's the um is the elite or the, the elite, VIP? The VIP. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they have a whole because okay, the whole thing, all through the all through the um the whole game, you're wondering, okay, who's watching? Because you're not seeing who's watching, right? <laughs> but halfway through, you find out there's a whole group of people that come watch the game, and they the ones funding the shit. You get the point? So they told them, listen. If y'all want to end the game, everybody who die, all the money would go to their families. Y'all could go back home because they were so terrified of how savage it was. Right. Them saying, yo, damn them families. I want that money for myself. Mm-hmm. And they came right back and just started killing each other. I mean, in the worst way, stealing food, stealing portions, double the portions, bumping back into the line. Mm-hmm. Like just our life. Now, if that was us, there would be so much write-ups about how violent this is mm-hmm. and the black stereotype. Right. And, you know, this is this is not a good image for black people and right. blah, 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 blah. As if Korean kids ain't going to watch that, I want to be saying that damn thing. Right. You get the point? Um, um, where we at? Well, do you remember 28 and 50? Yeah, Give me um, Astonishment and Provo. And, and right? Oh, 37. Come on, come on. Deuteronomy 28 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among mm-hmm. all nations where the Lord shall shall lead thee. Right? We shall become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead, shall lead us. How does this relate? That's our story. Right. And it's blowing everybody away. Everybody away. You have the Koreans getting yeah, who are Koreans off of this shit now. You know what I mean? Some of them actors, the the, the, the um the guy who played the doctor is the actual writer of the show. They're gonna get whole careers off of this thing. When this is a this is just a black story with a Korean twist. With this, this squid game. And the squid game is something like Hopscotch they was playing when they was young. And you had to reach that certain side. I, I couldn't understand that part. But that's is he was a young man, he decided he was grow up and make this thing that would prey on the low in society, whoever in debt, the poor. Once you're in debt and you're in poor, they pray on you, they find you, they check you, you know, if you owe people, they come and they make your offer. And you stupid, you're going to go into the offer. You get the point to try to get paid, but it's going to cost you your life, okay. which is our life in America. If somebody come and sell you a dream, and now you're making gambles you wouldn't normally make, you understand? And it costs you your life. We don't become an astonishment to the whole world, even when you put us in Korean, you know, faces. Even when you dress us up like, you know, them Africans. Right. You get the point? Like, it becomes an astonishment to the world because this is not a story about, um, you know, African gods or, you know, um, what's the Chinese man named? Buddha. Buddha. This is not a story about them. This is really our story. That's just dressed up like them. All right. Huh. You get it, boy? It's just dressed up like them. It's such a shameful thing because, brother, <clears throat> ain't no way this is what's, this is a Korean story. There's absolutely no way this is a Korean story. This is straight niggas. 
this is some nigga shit going on in that damn prison now. Right. I'm telling you, you get to watch it, you're going to be like, damn, this is some good nigga shit. You, you start enjoying this shit a little bit too much, you're going to realize this is just straight up and down black people in that thing. Right. right? That's what games is black life. Right, give me the soul of boy for wine, and soul of a boy for a wine and girl for a holler. Come, come. All right. Joel, three and three. The book of Joel, chapter three, verse three. And they have cast lots for my people. They have what? They have cast lots for my people. Mm -hmm. They have gambled over my people. They have gambled over my people. That's what the Lord is saying. Our oppressors, they gamble over our lives because our lives bring them money. Our lives bring them entertainment. Go ahead. Oh, good. And have given a boy for an harlot mm -hmm. and sold a girl for wine. And they have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine. Right? They make merchandise out of us easily. You get the point? Right. They make merchandise out of us for their entertainment and their pleasure. And that's what you see going on in this damn goddamn squid games here. Like they they reduce the whole thing into you know a game over a few days. But really, that's our life over a lifetime. Oh, cool. That's us chasing whatever dream in the world, right. going into debt. That's just you know, it's a stressed out type of death. That you, the debt that you could, you know, you could um get high blood pressure from because you're in debt so much, you're paying bills so much, you're working, but it's like you ain't working. Right. You get the point, and they get this opportunity to make quick money, and they go in there and they die. They're absolutely dying. They have the whole prison thing going on, and the more they die, is the more money they make. Because whoever watching it likes to see death, then they take the dead bodies and take out the hearts and the eyes and the liver and the kidneys, and they sell them. They said that, but come on. It's like, so is, is that the, uh, the the end game of the people who are watching is the uh, harvest? Well, I don't know. I ain't see that all the way down there, but they have some boat coming to that damn island at 3 o'clock in the morning when the prisoners sleep. And the dead... They, they, so they have an incinerator, they burn everybody. <clears throat> but some of the healthy ones, the young, they cut them open first. If you're, if you're old, once again, they have your whole record. Mm -hmm. They have whether you're sick, whether you have cancer, diabetes, whatever. And, and that's who they prey on. They prey on that type to bring in. But of course, you have the young people who are in debt. Right, they come out of school, they can't find a job, they're in debt, they borrow so much, they gamble so much, they're in debt. They die, they, they're cutting, cutting you open and selling your hearts and your liver and stuff like that. Now, that's supposed to be a fictitious film series, a foreign film, Netflix with subtitles and shit. Right. But nigga, that's our life. What are you talking about? That's life right here. Come on. You got the, uh, the brother, the dude that snuck in to uh, try to find his brother. Mm -hmm. His brother turned on him. His brother, you know, joined, joined the organization like some sample or something. See what I'm saying? And his brother uh, turned yeah, on some, him, shot him in the head. Some, some, <laughs> cop, some cop going in there looking for his brother because he, he hear about what's going on. He find out his, his brother done, they, he, his brother done defect. His brother done joined the empire. <laughs> <laughs> like some, you know, some Uncle Tom Negro. You get his point? The, Brother, every, watch everything coming out of Hollywood now. Now I'm talking about, you know, some old, you know, love romance thing with some white woman on a horse. I'm talking about, you know, movies, that's movies. You know, every now and then he's going to eat some, make some, the notebook, the phone booth. I ain't talking about that shit. I'm talking about, you know, something a little bit more impactful. They had a movie a few years ago called District 9. Anybody ever saw it? No, no, no. District 9 is niggas, I <laughs> It's straight up and down niggas. They call us prawns. Right. It's not black people because the South Africans hate us. Right, right. Um, the 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 um the alien who these shows based around his name is Christopher Johnson, Jesus Christ, JC. They twist the whole shit up. Mm -hmm. The uh, police who supposed to chase them, he was persecuting them, but now he is one of them, like Paul. So remember, in the world, they think Paul was a white man who converts. Oh, but in the show, he actually started turning into one, right. and he down there had to join them to survive. Right. Okay. You get the point? District 9 is us. Right. Is is absolutely us up the street. Um, eating, um, eating the cat food. Oh, because they're so poor. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> black people out here. <laughs> the Africans <laughs> eating people. Yeah. Bring me his hand. <laughs> Go ahead. I know you hate this movie, but uh, the Tomorrow War. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was a waste of 90 minutes. <laughs> it's an absolute waste. Of that. You know, however you want to look at it, that everything is in some way, form, or fashion is 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 us. Walking dead. Right. The zombies is niggas. Uh, the, the, okay, that, that's that's what clue me in. But the, you know, I, I'm looking at it. I'm like, how come there ain't no black zombies? And then they show you one and they look like a crackhead. <laughs> All the white zombies, yeah. they should fall off the face when you see in their skeleton. The black zombies just look like they're on heroin. Like you could bring them back. Black, no, no. But in general, bro, it's how, it's how werewolf movies, Dracula movies, vampires, zombies, that's what's Hollywood's way of black people. Right. Where we'll suck your blood, blacks and Hispanics, yeah, leech on society. Right. Um, vampires the same way. The zombies is the same way. They be walking dead. They could kill them. They don't fight back. They just, you know, and they, they could make you turn into just something like them. Right. This that's it's supposed to be that. You go look up the origins of all these zombie movies. The writers wanted them to re- be black people, the fallen in society. Right. Um, your X Men, your Marvel. Right. Right. That it was black people. Right. Martin Luther King was supposed to be um, Xavier. Xavier. And Malcolm X was supposed to be Magneto, yeah. right? And it was supposed to be representing black people. It was all around the 60s, the civil rights movement. Black Panther came out right after the Black Panther Party. Yeah. Hollywood makes its money on us. You need a better? Okay. Hollywood makes its money on us without consulting us. Right. And without giving right back. Right. And brother, this quick games here, these chinks are, they're making guap money up. Absolute black money on this shit here. I, I need them to dare this Korean to make another series. And I want to see what he's gonna write about. Because this Squid Games here, this is black people's life. Right. It's black people's life just turned into a little game with squares and triangles and circles. But it's the same thing that we live in and going through. You get the point is the exact same thing. Alright? Um what we have, what are you holding through? We just finished draw three and three, right? Alright, give me um Give me another scene. Give me um. Oh, let me see what else you can pull up there. And uh, so. Yeah. What, what what you have up now? The part of the prison, right? Concert. I'm showing this, this certain shapes on their face and whatnot. But the, those are supposed to be the prison guards. Oh, those are. Perfect. Those are supposed to be the prison guards, right? But I I want the part where with the if you could find a picture with the actual people who is in the prison thing. Who's absolutely in that? They 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 wearing like green and white. Concert, yeah, I have that. Right, they wearing green and white, and they having bunks stacked up high, and they are sleeping in bunks. They gotta get bathroom breaks. Um, they have a little area where they exercising. They have food time, just like in a prison. They have certain amounts of rations, and of course, I told you about the damn prison fighter. And then the, the nigga come the next day and said, "We purposely gave you all less food." To make sure y'all fight each other. We wanted y'all to fight each other. And y'all did. Everything comes from us, sir. Every, listen, Hitler's concentration camps comes from the Native Indians. Come on, yeah. Comes from America's treatment of the Native Indians. Yeah. Like everything comes from us. You understand? And they never ever gave it back to us. That's why this place got to burn. Who are they on? So go ahead. Um I, it was a quick scene in the in the show, but um uh, when uh, when the brother had broke in, he had got into the file cabinet, and I guess like how they've been doing, how long they've been doing the show. I mean, how long they've been doing this, you know, mass incarceration of them, and it went all the way back to the nineteen seventies, just like it's from the civil rights. Kind of just yeah, from civil rights. Like the last thing was like nineteen seventy something. Like yeah, that. all the way from the seventies, all the way to twenty twenty, and they have everybody's file and pulling you in and who you know who you are, your health. Everything about you is just right there. The whole thing is really us. Every this whole world is run by our oppression. Right. Right? The more we oppress is the more they um thrive. You get the point? Okay. The more we are oppressed is the more they thrive. Give me um give me the we lay down our body so that they could go over. Our bodies. 
right? Same thing with Hunger Games. That Hunger Games is is about us, right? Uh, Isaiah 51, 23. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, mm -hmm. which have said to thy soul, bow down, that we may go over. And thou hast laid thy body as the ground mm -hmm. and as the street to them that went over. Right. And that's that's the, the, the whole spirit of that entire series. Like these these people who they're praying on is brought low. And they, at one point they literally was on the ground begging, scrolled out on the ground begging. But after with them coming back, they done took a position that was morally low, spiritually low. They're willing to kill each other, do whatever. One brought in there, she just turned up the box to whoever would take on the damn team. Whoever taking on the team, she just, you know, all right, we get in. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You get the point? Like now they, they just they just low and they have these people who barely fit in over them, just like we low. And they making movies over us, benefiting us. Like, how are you gonna make a whole goddamn series, put only Korean people in it? Call it some kind of games, make it about some childish thing. Right. But this is really our life up and down, down to the whole prison scene. And now nobody's saying nothing about it. Right. Nobody ain't saying, okay, this is black people, no black leaders, all these scholars, all, all the um, reason Islam and all of them making with the vaccine and this and that. Do anything with the phone. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> well, all the damn analysis on this shit right. is it, it's, it's absent because they they ain't really watching what's going on. Like these, this is strict uh, after stop Asian hate, and then the Koreans make this thing, and everybody who even getting all the money. You think Netflix getting that money? That fool getting that money, right? And he ain't living like us. Uh, that money going to the Korean government to buy AKs and submarines. <laughs> what do you think he's gonna buy Jordans with the money? <laughs> and they gonna go buy AKs and submarines because he preparing for war. What you preparing for? Right, we one more time. Come on, come. Isaiah chapter 51, verse 23. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict thee, mm -hmm. which have said to thy soul, Bow down that we may go over, and thou hast laid thy body as the ground. Right, that's how we are. We done laid our body as the ground. We done become, you know, food for, for this place. This place literally devours us. Right. And that's spits right. us up. Literally, that's that's why they call them beasts. Right. And we devoured by the beasts of the field because when they eat us up, they profit. And it benefits them to be in this low state. And now you come and make this goddamn goofy-ass move. I mean, it's goofy as hell, brother. Goofy as hell. The damn prison laid out like um, the Oompa Loompa factory. All kind of colored doors and steps all over the place. Like the whole thing is it's, it's kind of meant to make you feel something abstract. Right. But it's not abstract. Right. It's not. It's This is our life that's on TV. But if it's not pointed out to you, you go out and tell anybody that's going to be like, nigga, you trip. You drink any Kool-Aid. I tell you, I challenge you, go watch the damn shit and tell me if, if you think that is, you know, Kim Jong Un Jong Jong in that thing. <laughs> if that's Su Young Ho. I think one of them, the lead actress name is Su Young Ho. <laughs> <laughs> you go tell me if that's them. That's not them. Right. This man then wrote our whole story and now it's headed to be the number one. Um, watched film ever. I'm not talking about ever on Netflix. Ever. And it's our story. But it's accepted because it's Korean. It's fully accepted because it's Korean. Boozy make a movie about his life. Nobody watching that shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Anybody see the Boozy movie? Nah, nah, you don't even know Boozy had a movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even know Boozy released, released his movie last week. Nobody, ain't nobody know Boozy have a movie. But this damn chick right here he trending now. He all over the damn internet. Looking boring as... He looked like the nigga that carry a closer to do your laundry. <laughs> he, 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 he got all the velvet damn blazer with glasses and he posted up like... He looked like nigga. Yeah, he's going to be back. <laughs> Push the button and then the shit come around. Right. And now he's going to be number one off of our story. And I, I honestly... Bro, I'm, I'm sure if you could peel behind the windows, he didn't write shit in 2009. Right. Some Jewish man did that, and this is the vehicle they use. They say, listen, we can't write this. We don't use the area nation already. We already use, you know, the Africans and shit. Who haven't we used yet? The Asians. Let's get them chinks up in here. Let's get them rocking and rolling. Go ahead. Right. 
Yeah, is it raw? Yes, it's up there. Which one? Oh, shit. Nah, I did nothing. I'm going to check it out and see. I'm going to check it out on YouTube. The squid games continue, but I told you, you have to jump there. I just let you, you team done shut down the squid games breakdown. <laughs> Goddamn. That's why the vape diffuse just went down. Yeah, I, I, just, I just seen it. It went from like.